Our lookout is in place. It's remote here, so people don't come by much. So we can gather in peace. Thanks. Great. The Communist Party has arrested lots of believers. We're constantly changing our meeting sites. Yeah. It's so hard to just read God's words and fellowship on the truth. Yes. It is. I've been thinking these past few days, if one day I'm really arrested and then I'm tortured, how can I stand witness? Yeah. Yeah. Arrest and persecution by the Great Red Dragon is a test for every single one of us. If we want to stand witness, we can't just rely on our own resolve and beliefs. Hmm. But we have to pray and call out to God the whole time. The only way to overcome Satan is with faith and strength gained from God's words. Mm. No one can stand strong all by themselves. Yes. Yes. Sister Wong, I heard that you were arrested, that you were beaten and tortured nearly to the point of death. Can you tell us how you survived? Please yes. do. All right. Well... At around 5 a.m. on July 2nd, 2009, I was leaving for a gathering when I saw a black sedan parked on the side of the road. Four policemen suddenly jumped out of it. One of them had a photo of me and shouted my name, and they all went straight inside. One officer kept my husband in a room while the rest of them tore our home apart, leaving it in an absolute disaster. I asked them why they were searching our home. Yeah. One officer glared at me and said, You've been reported as religious. I replied, Faith is right and natural, and I'm on the right path. What law have I broken? Yes. Absolutely. Then they showed me a book of God's words they'd found. Then they said, Your faith is illegal, and this is evidence for your arrest. They dragged me outside by my arm and forced me into their car. On the way to the station, I was thinking that I had no idea what kind of torture the police had planned for me. I was really afraid. So I prayed to God nonstop. I said, God, no matter how the police torture me, please protect and guide me. I will not be a Judas and betray you. Amen. Amen. After I prayed, I didn't feel quite so frightened. Thank, Thank God. God. When we arrived, the police took me to a room, pushed me down on the floor, and punched and kicked me. One of them said, if you don't tell us what you know, it'll be the end of you. I'll show you what I'm made of. He grabbed a handful of my hair and punched me hard, on my head and in my face, until my head was spinning and my mouth bleeding. Then holding onto my hair really hard, he started smacking me, one side then the other, until he wore himself out, then threw me to the floor. Those cops are so ruthless. Yeah. Before long, a man who said he was the chief of public security came in. He sat next to me and patted me on the shoulder. He said, you're too stubborn. Think of your child's future. Think of your family. Do you know why we didn't take a marked car to your house today? So we could protect your family. We took you here secretly, so no one in your village would know. Just tell us all that you know and we'll get you back home. We promise. Then you can go on with your life. Talk to us. Where's your church's money kept? Who converted you? Who's the leader? How shameless to say something like that. And after the arrest. Yeah. Yes. I could see it was Satan's trick. And I thought of God's words. You must be awake and waiting at all times, and you must pray before me more. You must recognize Satan's various plots and cunning schemes Know spirits and people, and discern various people, events, and things. Amen. God's words reminded me that the policeman was being nice just to get information on the church from me so I'd betray God. Yes. yes. I couldn't fall for it. Amen. Amen. That afternoon, he questioned me over and over for more than two hours. But seeing I refused to talk, he stood up abruptly. And with this scary look, he smacked me really hard a couple of times, leaving my face smarting from the pain. Another officer held a shiny knife that was maybe a foot or a foot and a half long. He just glared at me, circling me without saying a word. Seeing all this was really frightening. My heart was in my throat. I thought, if he stabs me anywhere with that thing, I won't survive it. Yes. Sure. I prayed and called out to God nonstop. And then, something God said occurred to me. God says, those in power may seem vicious on the outside, 
But don't be afraid, for this is because you have little faith. As long as your faith grows, nothing will be too difficult. Amen. Amen. God's words gave me faith and strength. No matter how brutal they are, the police are in God's hands. And so is my own life. Yes. Right. right. They can't do anything to me without God's permission. Yes. Exactly. exactly. I had to be ready to give my life to stand witness, not be a Judas and betray God even if I died. Amen. Amen. I felt much better after that. Thank, Thank God. God. I still wouldn't say anything, so the officer clenched his teeth in anger, rammed his knife into the tabletop, and glared at me as he left. Mm. The public security chief kept questioning me the next day. And when I stayed quiet, he screamed at me. If you won't talk here, we've got a special place for you. That's when they took me and three others to the public security bureau. Then they transferred us to a detention house. That night, another inmate said something to me. When an officer saw it on surveillance, he called me into an interrogation room and asked if I'd been evangelizing. I said no. He punched me right in the side of my head. Ugh knocking me off my feet. I felt like the world was spinning and I was seeing stars. It hurt so much. Then some other officers started punching and kicking me for more than half an hour until my mouth and nose were bleeding and I couldn't move my legs or my waist. Getting beaten just for exchanging a few little words? It's so unreasonable. Yes. Right. Yes. I got really angry. Then I thought of God's words. Forefathers of the ancient, beloved leaders, they all oppose God. Their meddling has left all beneath heaven in darkness and chaos. Religious freedom, the legitimate rights and interests of citizens, they are all tricks for covering up sin. Why put up such an impenetrable obstacle to the work of God? Why employ various tricks to deceive God's folk? Where is the true freedom and the legitimate rights and interests? Where is the fairness? Where is the comfort? Where is the warmth? Why use deceitful schemes to trick God's people? Why use force to suppress the coming of God? Why not allow God to roam freely upon the earth that he created? Why hound God until he has nowhere to rest his head? Where is the warmth among men? Where is the welcome among people? Amen. Amen. The CCP guarantees freedom of religion in black and white, but it's nothing but lies. Because of my faith, I didn't even have the right to talk. Yes. Following God is right. It's the most natural thing, but not to them. Yes. Right. They enjoy everything that God has created while brazenly working against God and arresting believers, imagining they can destroy God's work. They're a pack of anti-God demons. This really made me detest the Communist Party. Yes, mm. the CCP is Satan, the devil. Yes, yes. it is. The afternoon of July 4th, two officers came and put handcuffs and shackles on me, then blindfolded me and put me in a car. I asked them, where are we going? And one said viciously, to bury you alive. I was really frightened, so I said a prayer to God in my heart. Dear God, Please give me faith and courage, so no matter what they do to me, I won't be a Judas and betray you, even if I die. Amen. Amen. This Bible verse came to mind after I prayed. Fear not them which kill the body, but not the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Amen. Amen. This gave me some faith and strength. Everything's in God's hands, so they could just kill my flesh, but never my soul. Yes. That's right. I didn't feel so scared after that. Thank, Thank God. God. When the car finally stopped, an officer grabbed the shackles around my ankles and roughly pulled me down onto a concrete floor. My head hit the hard surface and started buzzing. Then everything went black. I don't know how much time passed, but I heard someone talking around me. I opened my eyes and found myself soaked with water lying on a concrete floor. I vaguely remembered them splashing water on me to wake me up. Seeing that I'd regained consciousness, the police dragged me into an interrogation room and put me in an iron chair, then restrained me really tightly by the wrists and ankles. With clenched teeth, five or six of them, 
gave me another round of punches and kicks, all while saying, This room is a secret. We can torture you believers in Almighty God and bury you alive without anyone finding out about it. You're so dead. How cold-blooded. It yeah. is. I was bleeding from my nose and mouth. It was nonstop, and my whole body hurt. I slumped forward in the chair. One of them started the interrogation. Where's the church's money? Who's the leader? Who converted you? If you don't talk, we'll skin you alive. I said, I don't know a thing. He was so enraged, he made a fist, then pummeled me on the head and the face. I fainted, still shackled to the chair. Another one grabbed a handful of my hair, splashed water on me, and a mix of blood and water started flowing down from my head. I was so dizzy. I felt like I was about to die. I was praying and calling on God. And then I thought of these words. God says, there is nothing for you to fear. Satans are under our feet. Amen. Amen. Living or dying is in God's hands. No matter how brutal Satan is, it can't surpass God's authority. That's yes. right. This thought gave me faith. Thank, Thank God. God. Incredibly, it didn't hurt so much when they hit me after that. I felt like I was wrapped in a ball of cotton. Yeah. I knew this was God looking out for me, and I felt so much gratitude toward him. Thank, Thank God. God. After that, 10 officers split into pairs and worked on me in shifts, not letting me sleep day or night, not letting me eat. They'd hit me the second my eyes would start to close. And some would press themselves against my face, saying filthy and vile things to shame me. One officer said, let's see what kind of figure is under those clothes. Out outraged that he would say that, I spat right in his face. I really saw what a pack of brutes they were. That's yes. right. Another one said, if you don't talk, we'll take your clothes off and parade you through the streets. How's that? That's evil. It is. I was angry and afraid, but I never stopped praying to God in my heart, asking for his help. Seeing that I really refused to talk, six of them came at me, punching and kicking, until my face was swollen. A few of my front teeth were crooked, and my gums were bleeding. One tooth was about to fall out. They were even burning my arms with lit cigarettes. I felt a searing pain every single time. They slapped me really hard in the face with a fly swatter. And when the top of it came off, they just used the handle. My face was a bloody pulp. What a pack of demons. Yeah. yeah. Then two of them grabbed me by the hair. They yanked my head back really hard, forced me to open my mouth wide, and poured water in for more than ten minutes, leaving me gasping for air. I felt like my eyes were about to pop out of my head, and I was crying out the whole time. I called out to God in my heart. <sighs> oh, God. I can't take much more. Please give me faith and strength. Please save me. Amen. Amen. Then I remembered a passage of God's words. God says, Be not afraid. With my support, who could ever block this road? Amen. Amen. Remember this. Do not forget. All that occurs is by my good will, and everything is under my observation. Can you follow my word in all that you say and do? When the trials of fire come upon you, will you kneel and call out, or just cower and not move forward? Amen. 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 Thinking of this restored my faith and strength. God was my pillar, my backup force. I could never survive all their tortures by myself, but I could with the help of God. Amen. Amen. Thank God. They tormented me for several more hours. One of them said to me, Others last three days at most in this chair before they talk. We haven't pried your mouth open yet. 
And you've been here five days. Let's see what's tougher, your mouth or my fist. Then he started, punching me in my mouth and all over my head, until my vision went and I saw stars. <sighs> With no sleep or food, for five days and for five nights, I had a high fever, full body chills and chattering teeth. When they saw that, they turned on the air conditioning. <sighs> what savages. Yes. yes. I lost all sensation from the cold before long, and I wondered if I was about to freeze to death. Then I remembered something from God's words. God says, faith is like a single log bridge. Cling to life and you'll fall, but be ready to perish and you'll cross over. Amen. My fate was in God's hands. He had final say. Yes. yes. I'd fallen into Satan's hands, and I wasn't planning on making it out alive. I didn't have my own choices or requirements, but I was ready to submit to God's rule and stand witness, even if it meant it would end in my own death. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Then I gradually regained feeling in my hands and feet, and they started their brutal interrogation again. One of the younger officers punched me three times in my head. He said, We'll definitely beat you to death if you don't talk. Then we'll bury you where you won't be found. No one cares if we kill you people. No one stands up for you. Disgusting. Yes. He laughed and said, You believe in Almighty God? Why doesn't he save you? Where's your God? I stayed silent, but I thought, how easy that would be for him. Yes. He could do that with nothing more than a simple thought, but that's not how he works. God was allowing me to go through this so I could gain discernment, so I could see that the police may seem upright on the outside, but they're just demons in the form of humans. Right. right. They'd never make me betray God. Amen. Amen. On the morning of the eighth day, the police finally took me out of the steel chair. I feebly stood up, and then I fell to the floor, my head ringing, and I blacked out. I don't know how long it was, before I woke up and found them taking me to a detention center. When I got out of the car, I saw that my left leg was really swollen, and so was my left foot. And I still had those 10 pound shackles clamped around my ankles. I couldn't move quickly. Each step hurt. Complaining about me walking slowly, an officer kicked me down onto the ground. I pulled myself up then pushed myself forward, step by step, using the wall. I got to the cell with a great deal of effort. Some inmates cried when they saw my wounds, asking, how can they be so cruel? Are they even human? Yeah. My nose was bruised and my face was swollen. My eyes barely opened. My mouth was so swollen I could see my own lips, and my teeth were crooked. My left leg was so swollen that I couldn't use the restroom. I had to pee in my pants. <sighs> I couldn't put on my left shoe. I had a herniated lumbar disc. I could not move. Later on, the police took me to the hospital because my injuries were so severe they didn't want me to die on them. A doctor examined me and said that an artery in my left leg had burst and it would quickly reach my lungs. If I didn't get surgery right away, it would be too late. But the officers had him give me a prescription to take at the detention center. Then they carried me to the car and brought me back. How horrible that they denied the treatment when it's needed. Yes. It is. Yeah. Back at the center, I lay on the cement floor unable to move. As the doctor said, without a surgical procedure, my condition got worse. My leg and my foot got even bigger, and my belly started swelling up too. The other inmates couldn't bear to look at me, but said angrily, The police are brutal. They are just heartless. That's right. Yes. right yeah. They charged you with the crime of antisocial behavior, but they are the disorderly ones. Definitely. For sure. You see, the pain in my leg was so bad. I remembered the doctor saying that I needed immediate treatment, or I could die at any moment. I felt some weakness, and then I thought, am I 
really going to be tortured to death by them? Then I remembered these words. God says, Almighty God is an all-powerful physician. To dwell in sickness is to be sick, but to dwell in the spirit is to be well. So long as you have one breath, God will not let you die. Amen. Whether I lived or died was in God's hands, and I couldn't die without God allowing it. Yes. 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 If God allowed me to die, then I was willing to accept that and submit and give him testimony. Amen. Thank God. A few weeks later, the police released me from the detention center so I wouldn't die there. Two of them carried me out on a stretcher to the entrance, then said to me, Your case isn't closed. This is a temporary medical release. My family picked me up. When they saw my condition, they held me and cried. They said to the cops, You did this to her just because she believes in God? And you thugs extorted us for 20,000 yuan for her release? It it sucks. Sucks. You aren't the people's police. You're the mafia. Right. Yeah. yeah. My family took me to the hospital, and the exam showed the same thing as before. My left leg had a ruptured artery, and the doctor said I should have come sooner, that I needed immediate surgery. But the surgery was too expensive for us, so my only option was conservative therapy. <sighs> we went to lots of different hospitals, but they said my condition was too serious. They wouldn't accept me. My family ended up pulling some strings and found a hospital that reluctantly admitted me. Thank God. It took about two phases of treatment, and surprisingly, the swelling in my leg and my belly went down a lot, and I could stand and slowly walk again. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The doctor gave me a thumbs up and said, it's simply a miracle that you've improved so quickly without any surgery. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I got even better after a month of treatment in the hospital, but I was still left with some symptoms. I have numbness and chills in my left leg, even now after my release, and I get dizzy spells and buzzing sounds in my head. Quite a few of my teeth were loose from all those punches, so I had to get dental implants. I can't do physical work due to the fractures in my lower back. I look okay from the outside, but in fact, I'm practically disabled. This is the fault of the evil Communist Party. Yeah. It is. Getting arrested and persecuted gave me some discernment over the party's evil and anti-God nature, and I saw that they're all demons that fight justice, worship evil, and devour people's souls. They are. But the Great Red Dragon is just a pawn in the hands of God. Yes. yes. It's there to serve God. All this helped me gain insight and discernment. Amen. It also allowed me to experience and understand God's almighty deeds. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. When they were beating me so brutally, it was God's words that gave me faith and strength, guiding me to overcome Satan and allowing my miraculous survival. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. God has given me this second chance at life, and I'm so grateful for his love. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. I suffered physically from the great red dragon's torture, but I don't feel negative or weak. I'm even more resolved to follow God. Amen. 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 I took on another duty a few months after I got home, resolving to fully forsake the great red dragon and do my duty to repay God's love. Amen. 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 Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Through oppression and hardship, faith comes from praying and from relying on the words of God. It's the only way to stand strong. Yes. yes. Thanks, Thanks be to, be to God. God. Thanks be to God.